Do you have a WordPress site that you're looking to make a little bit faster? Are you trying to get your core web vitals up to speed? Or you just want a better user experience for your guests? Well, that's what we're going to talk about on today's video. Hi, my name is William Beam. I am the founder of Suburbia Press. We're a small website development agency. We do audits, we build websites. And I've been working with WordPress for over 15 years. I've tried a lot of things. I've made a lot of mistakes. And now I've got a pretty good handle on what works and what doesn't. And I want to show you what's working for me and why. Let's start off with taking a look at some results first. This is a GT Metrics scanning site. If you're not familiar with it, it's pretty popular. There's the one that everybody really wants to look at for Google is their page speed insights, but I think this one gives you a lot more information as we can see a little bit further down. But for right now, this is suburbiapress.com. Performance, 100%, structure, 99%. Everything over here is looking green and good. Another site that I have is called Orlando Local. Again, performance, 100%, structure, 99 and we're in the green for all of these other core web vitals. Finally, this site, is my photography site, performance 100%, structure 97%, so there's a little bit of change there, and we're in the green for all of this. There are a little bit of a difference on this site because I have this little thing down here, and I said this is the uh, additional information. So this thing where it says avoid an excessive DOM size. DOM is document object model. And that talks about the number of elements you have. I typically try to keep it under 1500, but this one I decided my performance was good and I left it there. So what's causing that? On this site, I have a number of post grids that show uh, posts for different reasons. So for example, if you go there and you'll see, these are all my latest blog posts. There'll be another grid that says, these are posts about lighting. Another grid might show posts about creativity or gear or something of that nature. Every one of those grids adds a lot of elements. They're actually pretty heavy on the elements that they add to the document object model. So I had to come up with a compromise. What did I want to show versus how much could I show without affecting performance and overall speed? And that's where I came to the compromise. And I've got a medium effect here. I know exactly what's causing it. And that kind of brings me to a point that I want to talk about. No matter what cache you have, there are a couple of things that are going to affect your performance. One is going to be your server and the available resources. The other are the elements or activity that you put on a given page that you're measuring. So for this page, I've got just a little bit more than what is probably best, but I also wanted that information out there. So I decided to make a compromise on that. So what you put on a page matters, even if you have the greatest server in the world, if you have the greatest caching in the world, if you put too much stuff over there, and WordPress is, says, I don't have the resources that I need for this, then that could affect your overall performance. So keep that in mind. And when I talk about server performance, I'll tell you what I've got. But what I want to say is that you cannot cash your way out of poor hosting. If you're using Bluehost or other you know, small shared hosting, you have limited resources, you don't know where the server is, and there's only so much you can do. So caching can help, but it cannot override poor hosting. I am using a Cloudways Vulture HF server. It has four gigs of RAM and two CPU cores. Four gigs of RAM is more than you're going to need for one site, but I'm hosting multiple sites there. The reason I decided to put them all on the same server is because you get some benefits when you get up to a four gig site. And one of those benefits is something known as Redis caching, R-E-D-I-S. That's kind of a heavy thing to put on a server that's down to maybe one gigabit of RAM. But on four gigs of RAM, then you can start running additional caching. Redis is a server-side caching. And with Cloudways, it's something you can turn on for free. And you can also get a plugin on your WordPress site and operate that for free, and you get the benefits of it. So having multiple sites on one bigger server gives me more performance benefit. So that said, one of the biggest things that I do is use WP Rocket. And I have used a number of different caching plugins through over the years. I've tried uh, Total Cache. I've tried Breeze, which is the one that comes with Cloudways. I've used Evercache that came with WP Engine and a number of other caching things. There's one called Flying Press that I tried, which claims to have, you know, 
really optimal um, speed performance. I didn't find that it was any better than WP Rocket. In fact, I found that there were a lot of conflicts and I had a lot of issues with support to deal with those conflicts. And I also found support was really lacking. The guy who uh, created this knows an awful lot about WordPress. But in my opinion, he's not very good at support. He's uh, very terse, very blunt. He doesn't answer questions very well. And because of the geographical dis distance, I'm in Florida, he's in India. And there are several hours between. So that meant whenever time I've got a support problem, I had to wait until the next day to get a response. And if I got a response the next day, sometimes it took a couple of days. So Flying Press, although a lot of people are touting it these days, I honestly don't think it is any better than what we're getting with uh, WP Rocket. And quite honestly, WP Rocket not only works very well, but the user interface is so much better that I can't see recommending anything else. So the reason I wanted to do this video is someone asked me in the comments of another one if I could show my settings. Well, that's what we're going to do. So here we are in the dashboard. We start up, and if you've just uh, installed it, it says you're activated and working, applies 80% of web performance benefits. That's nice. The first thing I do is I turn off Rocket Analytics. And I do that for one simple reason. I don't want to give data to anybody else. Not that I'm afraid of the data that's going out. I don't want to spend the time on my server collecting the data and then transmitting the data. So those take uh, CPU cycles, they take bandwidth, and it's just one more thing that stacks up to basically wear down your site. This is not going to kill your site by giving that analytics, but when you look at the number of plugins that want analytics, they all want analytics. And I thought, no. I'm just turning them all off, and this one is no exception. All right, so let's go over here to the next thing is cache. I have a couple of settings here that I do. One is I do enable caching for mobile devices, and I do not enable caching for logged in users. That's because a logged in user should see personalized information. If they're seeing cached information and they're getting zippy response, well, they're not seeing what the actual server is doing. If you have a problem with your back end, this part, you know, the dashboard and this part of your uh, WordPress environment is running slow, that indicates that you have poor server resources. And if it's cached, you won't know that because you're getting the same thing sent to you all the time and you'll be making changes and then you won't see them take effect because it's cached. And that is a bad experience for someone on the back end. So I would say if you're managing a WordPress website, do not enable caching for logged in users. Another reason for that is let's say that you have a support site where people log in for support or you have a membership site. You have dynamic information and if it's cached, well, again, they may not see the dynamic information. So for example, if your logging page takes into a site that says, hello, William, the next person comes along and her name is Mary and she sees, hello, William, that's not a good user experience. So that's why you don't enable caching for a logged in WordPress user. Down here are the lifespan. I think this uh, defaults to 10 hours, and they even have a little reduced lifespan if you notice issues. I don't. That's because what I'm publishing on this site is standard blog content. I don't have logged in users getting dynamic content. I don't need to refresh all that often, so I've got this set to seven days. Others, I have it set at 10 days. And the reason for that is, one, I don't need to clear the cache that often because there's no dynamic content. And two, it takes server resources to automate something and uh, do that cache clearing and then reload the cache. So why would I spend time doing that when nothing's changing that needs to be done? That's why I leave this where it is. This next one I think is gonna surprise a few people. Under file optimization, I don't turn on any of these. And again, that's because I've got a good server. There are a lot of people who will tell you that you should minify CSS files for better uh, metrics reports or load JavaScript deferred, delay JavaScript execution. And I understand the reason why they're saying that, but there's a better way to do it. And that's why I don't do it. Also, when you click this to minify something, you'll get this notice. It could break things. I have had different WordPress sites that have had problems with the CSS files being minified or optimized and they did not appear correctly, and it became a problem. So doing this, it won't break every site. As a matter of fact, it probably won't break most sites, but it might break yours. And depending on what you're doing, make sure you understand why. And what it says is removing white space and comments to reduce the file size. And overall, that gives you a little bit of a bump up. And it means that every time someone loads a page and it's removing that stuff, your server is taking an action. 
again, I don't want my server to take any more actions than it needs to. So that's why I do not check any of these, but I will show you what I do instead. And before I get to that, there's the media tab. I do lazy load images. And I think that's very important. You want your images to load as they come into view on your client screen, but not uh, all at once when you're loading the page. So I do it for images, for iframes and videos, and I re replace a YouTube iframe with a preview image. And typically I'll put out my own preview image rather than letting it just grab whatever from YouTube. Now, this item down here, if you've been diligent every time you load some media, you've put in the dimensions, you don't have to worry about this. On the other hand, if you haven't done that, this fixes everything for you right away. What that does is it tells the browser how to construct the image by giving it the right dimensions so that you don't have something that loads maybe full size and then shrinks down or jumps around. That's what affects your CLS score. So it doesn't hurt to turn this on. You may not need it, but it doesn't hurt. So I would say, go ahead and turn that on. Now, instead of doing file optimization, I use preload. And again, I can do this because I've got a server that's got sufficient resources. Activate preloading means that WP Rocket will detect your sitemaps and save all the URLs to the database. Basically, it's going to preload them. So when somebody comes out to your website and requests a page, it says, oh, I've already got this in cache. Here's the cache. I don't have to go build it for you. Think about it like going to a burger joint. You can wait for them to cook something in the back, and you'll get a nice, delicious burger. Or maybe they've got some wrapped up in a little tray that comes down, and they'll just hand them out right away. This is handing it out right away. And since you don't taste the web page like you would a freshly cooked burger, why not activate it? If you've got the server resources, just do it. It will take advantage of such quick display of what I call stagnant pages. Basically, those are ones without dynamic content that don't have to be rebuilt to personalize the message for each person that comes along. So if you've got active preloading for most blog pages and web pages that are going to present the same thing over and over again, why wait for it to build? Why not just go ahead and give them the cached copy and activate preloading does that. And I don't need to worry about all this uh, file optimization stuff with optimizing CSS and so forth, because that is going to take time and, ser and server resources, ideally to give you a faster load time, but it's not going to be faster than just passing this out. Also, enable link preloading. That means when someone hovers over a link on your website, it starts to uh, load that link. So that way you get a very quick response to go to the next click. Now, as far as preloading fonts, I think that loading your fonts is a good idea, having them loaded on your server. There is, depends on what you're doing. The fastest thing you're ever going to get is if you use system fonts. That's the ones that are built into every web browser and they don't have to be loaded for anywhere. If you're using Google fonts without doing any preloading, what happens is when your site needs a font, maybe one's bold, one's italic, it has to go off to Google, request that file, bring it back, and then render it and display it to your client. You can load Google fonts or some other fonts on your server to eliminate that time to go to Google fonts or Adobe's uh, type kit, whatever it may be. And I do that in another tool called Perf Matters. And I'll put that in the link below. But Perf Matters has a little simple switch. I toggle that. It loads my Google fonts locally on the server. And I use that instead. The reason why is because it's easier to work with there. And I do not want to perform the same function with multiple tools on a website. So there are some things that I use uh, WP Rocket to do. There are some things I use other tools to do. Let's go down to our advanced rules. Never cache URLs. On every site you have, if you have a sitemap, and you should, make sure that you put your sitemap here. You don't want Google to come in here to look at your sitemap and find something that's been cached from seven to 10 days ago and doesn't have the latest posts that you put up because that means they won't get indexed. Go ahead and find out whether you use Yoast or Rank Math or All-in-One SEO. Find out what the proper format is, put it in here, and do not cache that. Again, if you have a website where people are logging in or they have customized displays that has dynamic content, like what I mentioned with somebody's name, you can put those URLs in here as well too. That way your server is loading them directly. They're not going to get a cached page. So that is something to keep in mind. 
I don't have any issues with caching cookies, user agents. I don't have URLs to always purge. And same thing with query stings. So the only thing I'm doing is making sure that my sitemap never gets cached. We spoke about a database and we spoke about tools where I use one tool and I don't use another. This is a good example. I have another tool called WP Optimize. And it does the same thing as what we're seeing here. So you can use this if you don't have WP Optimize. You can clean out the revisions. You can clean out drafts. This all works very well. But the reason I don't use this is because I have another tool. And part of it is because of this line down here. Back up your database before you run a cleanup. Because you never know. If you screw something up and you don't have a database to restore, well, you want to be able to restore. As you can see up here, I use Updraft Plus. That is my database backup tool. WP Optimize was made by the same folks. So the backup and the database cleanup and some other things that it does are integrated with each other. WP Optimize also has a caching service, which I don't use because I use WP Rocket. But the two things I like about WP Optimize is one, it's integrated with my backup system. Two, it'll allow me to delete tables. Whereas WP Rocket, it'll allow me to delete entries in the database, but not tables. The reason you may want to delete tables is because perhaps you've used a plugin or a theme that's put some tables on your website. Maybe you used WooCommerce once and you no longer use it. Those tables are very likely still inside your database. They're clogging up space and they're also slowing down performance for database queries. WP Optimize and the free version of it will do this, will allow you to identify and delete those tables. And that will be one more thing to give you performance. So all of these tools that you see here for post cleanup, these work, but they don't do as much as WP Optimize does. And I have this rule. I use only one tool to perform a given task. So that's why I'm not using this in WP Rocket. Nothing wrong with these tools. It's just that I don't want, you know, two things competing with one another. All right, CDN is a content delivery network. That means that there are servers spread around the globe that have your information, your content, so it's speedier to deliver to somebody who is far away from your server. However, I consider a content delivery network much like grading on a curve. It may slow down your website overall. So I'm getting my fastest performance without a CDN. And most of my audience, more than 90%, is in the United States, which is where I'm keeping my server as well. So they're getting fast performance and delivery, and that's working great. But I, if I had an audience in Europe or Asia or Africa or Australia that was significant, I would probably want a CDN. The CDN I would not want is Rocket CDN. It's really, it's not that good. $7.99 build a month. That is double the price of a better CDN, which would be bunny.net or bunny CDN. And it's probably about half the price. It is a better CDN, has better performance. If you have a distributed audience, a CDN may be worth your while. So you might take a hit on local performance, but to get better overall performance. But if most of your audience is coming from the location where you are, I would say skip the CDN. As I said, it can slow down your website. And with that, we'll go on to the heartbeat. A lot of people think that Controlling the heartbeat is a good way to stave off problems. The heartbeat came out with Jetpack years ago, and other plugins also use it now. So basically, it's kind of a signal that goes out, and it can uh, save some of your server responses if you disable or reduce it. I would recommend reducing it. I don't really uh, find a need to control the heartbeat or to reduce the activity too much. And the reduction is only from one minute to two minutes. So that's what I'm doing on this side. Now for the add-ons, you'll find a few of them over here. So Varnish is another uh, caching thing, and it is on Cloudway servers. I don't use it. I've tested it. I don't find significant savings from it or performance benefits. And I thought, why spend server cycles and caching something if it's not really helping me out? This one, it's pronounced Weppy, which I don't know who made that up, but... Uh, I do agree with that. You want to optimize your images and WebP and AVI are basically modern formats that reduce the size of your images. But I'm using short pixels. So you can see down here, you are using short pixel. I find that to be quite honestly, the best image optimizer that I've discovered. So I've got this turned off. 
I do use Cloudflare for my DNS. I use the free version. I'm not paying for uh, Cloudflare. And so it's integrated. I do not use Security. I'm using WordFence, which is a different uh, WordPress security plugin. So for Cloudflare, let me check on that. Basically, there are a couple of options here after you put in your credentials. Development mode is helpful if you're doing development. It'll temporarily activate on your website, and it'll turn off after three hours. Optimal settings, well, yeah, you want that, because what it's going to do is it's going to enhance your Cloudflare configuration for speed, performance, grade, and compatibility. So that's giving you a little bit more of a performance boost. Relative protocol is if you're using Cloudflare's flexible SSL. Since I have my own security certificate on this site, I'm not using that. The last two options down here, image optimization. Well, as I said, I'm using short pixel. WP Rocket has Imagify, but quite honestly, I didn't find this to be as good as short pixel. In fact, there's a free plugin called U, which is spelled E-W-W-W, that can do a very good job of optimizing. So I would recommend using that even before paying for uh, this one. And then we come down to tools. So you can see that you can export your settings, import settings from maybe another site we've developed them. And there's this option to roll back. What I found on the WP Rocket Facebook page is every time a new version comes out, there's somebody who says, your new version broke my site. And it probably did. And most of the time, I'm not positive, but most of the time it seems to be related to the file optimization, the optimized CSS and JS, you know, for the JavaScript. I'm not using those, so I never, ever have a problem with a new version coming out because I've got a good server and I am active preloading all of the stuff on my site. And that's what's giving me some wonderful results like this. So if you're curious how I'm getting a good performance and maybe this will help you get good performance as well too, that's how I'm using it from everything I've used. It is the best caching plugin that is out there. It is simple and easy to use. It's well-maintained. And if you know how to use it, it'll give you great results. If you like this video, please go ahead, click the like button. That tells the YouTube overlords that I did something right. This will help you. Great. It'll tell you that it helped you and then it'll tell them that you like it. So maybe it will help somebody else. They'll share it with more people. And I really appreciate that. If you click the like button, it helps the channel grow. Again, my name is William Beam. I am with Suburbia Press. I uh, will see you again in the next video.